Hi there, it's Stacy Yesner. I'm here with Coffee Talk. Today I'm going to be talking to Catherine Morphis from Virginia, just waiting for her to join me. So she should be on any minute. This is her first time. She's not the biggest Instagram person. So let's see if she uh, is able to get on. So hopefully we won't have any issues. So looking forward to having her join. I met her in Atlanta last year and I'm very excited to chat with her. So yeah, so how's everyone doing today? I know it's beautiful here in Chicago. I don't know how the weather is everywhere else. I know California, it's been really rainy. Um, hopefully that weather is clearing up soon. So, um, yeah. So, can't see here too well. There we go. Hopefully you got the uh, invite to join. And well, there you are. Hi. Hi there. How are you? I'm doing great. It's so good to see you. you too. I don't uh, have any coffee, but I already drank my green tea and that's the way I roll. That's all right. I've had my coffee too. I have some water. Nice. So tell me how things are going with you. Um, well, I um, I'm in Pittsburgh today, and I started working with a therapist. I've gone three times. <laughs> I think you get to a certain age in life, and you're like, hold up, I have to process. And um, the therapist was like, why are you doing so many different things? And so I've been thinking about that question, but I'm in Pittsburgh putting together the design for a mission home for our church where I've been able to furnish an entire brand new house. And I'm almost finished with the install right now. And this has been like a little side job because I haven't had enough going on this year. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but I'm just feeling super exhilarated and like at nighttime when my mind races, it's racing with gratitude. I think in the springtime, I just feel like a total optimist. How about you? Oh my God, you, <laughs> <laughs> you, it's like, you're my inspiration. You've been so like crazed and so stressed with family and not, like you take on so much and you get so much accomplished and you're still running your business and, 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 and handling stressful situations so well, you are such an inspiration. Thank you. And I think it's amazing. So, so what about yeah. you? How is your, how's your business right now? I mean, I don't know how it is in your market, but we are very low in inventory mm -hmm. and you know homes are going for ridiculous amounts over asking even in really low price points and so it's been very mm -hmm. crazy and um it's it's been very difficult for some of my buyers at the lower price points to be able to secure a place and so you know going 10%, 15% over asking, which is really stretching their budget very far and we're not winning offers. So what are they doing? It's hard. Because I'm finding that a lot of buyers come out with me a few times. And then when I give them the terms, they just kind of go away with their tail between their legs because they didn't realize when they went online and saw all these teaser rates that you're going to have to actually pay market interest and you're going to actually have to bring a really solid offer so they're kind of just 
putting things on pause and renting for a year? Well, so one of my clients I've been working with for over a year and she has been renting and can only rent until September. And she's like, I should have done this two years ago. Um, but she wasn't in the right headspace having gone through, like gone through a divorce. Mm -hmm. And so we're even putting in offers on things sight unseen because she's looking in a very specific subdivision and we've seen like so many of these townhomes. And so, you know, she can't necessarily um, do the appraisal gap because she doesn't have the extra cash. Yep. So, but we know these properties are going to appraise because they have, like, there's so many that we have that are, you know, that we know we're not going to worry about that. We just have to go in with our best offer. And I'm working so closely with the lender to say, this is, this is a property. Tell me what the best offer we can do. Yep. And with the interest rates changing day to day, it's all right, what she's approved for last week and what she's approved for this week have totally changed. And it's really hard when you have such a low price point. I've been the cat I've noticed that like the right now the market goes to the creative problem solvers. Mm -hmm. And you have to just like take out every resource that you have even if it's not necessarily staying in your lane. And I see that happening um, with the gals on my team. And now more than ever, like that whole philosophy of like inch wide, mile deep, you've been working with her for how long? And you're dedicated to her. And at the end of the day, this pipeline may have taken a year and a half, but it's going to result in you finding success on this transaction, but also if you do that multiplied by every one of your um, clients, then you're going to have a business that sticks around through thick and thin. Right, right, right. And so what was also very interesting is I just, um, I have on our, I have on <laughs> our um, private listing, um, our, our compass coming soon, I have a listing that had been on the market with another agent and they didn't take professional pictures and it sat and i haven't taken pictures yet because it's not ready and i had a showing and it was an agent was looking for herself and her husband was the lender and so we were talking they were there for a long time and ultimately they decided that it isn't the right property for them but um the husband called me yesterday and um, so we were talking about what they think, um, what they um, think that, oh, great, Madeline, you'll have to <laughs> um, send me an instant message so I can um, connect with her. Um, so we uh, were talking about what, you know, what needs to happen in the property, like, you know, was it priced correctly? Is, is there anything that needs to be done to the place? Yep. And so he gave me some feedback and like my client was going to fix some flooring. And so instead of fixing the flooring, we're going to offer a credit because I don't yep. really want my client to spend the money. I'd rather her provide the credit. So a buyer could do the flooring themselves or do a, a a rate buy down or whatever they need to do to make the price of the property work for them and you know talk so the husband happens to be a lender so having that conversation with him and again putting it in the agent remarks that there will be a yep. x percent closing cost credit for the you know earmarked for the flooring but the agent will be able to guide their client to know that it's able to be used for however they want to use it. I um, love agent remarks and I'm amazed how few agents use them, but mm -hmm. that's like our ace in a hole. If you want people to be coming to the professional realtors, you better be reserving some, some of that goodness for a forum that only realtors have access to. You know, right. Because if someone just, and also just the whole timing and the networking, 
Good job, lady. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, but that's the whole point is, is what can we do to help mm -hmm. our sellers as well as help a potential buyer get into the property? So, yeah, but yeah, so you're in Pittsburgh, but your business mm -hmm. is in Virginia yeah. and you, you're starting to build a team. Yeah. And you're, and what's going on with the nonprofit <laughs> and, and um your daughter how's she doing and and everything else what i mean <laughs> okay. there's like so many things so we're gonna, we're gonna start off with my team um in the fall i read the book who not how god bless the 6 a.m or book club because every single one of those books has changed my life and i now listen to coaching and leadership and real estate and professional growth and personal growth books every time I'm in the car. Um, I, I just can't get enough. I love it. But Who Not How helped me to really get focus on building out a structure that would allow me to um, create more success with less work, actually. So um, Connie and Judy are the realtors on my team. We've had lots of other agents that we've kind of introduced um, ourselves to who ultimately were not the right culture fit. And I'm realizing how precious it is to have a team that's unified and collaborative and kind hearted. And it's amazing. So um, because the way we structured it, Connie and Judy are growing their own businesses for themselves. They have my name and our group and our group marketing, but they do not get paid unless they bring in the business. There is no percentage of any of my deals that they get. I get percentages of their deals, but I'm doing the marketing and whatnot. And interestingly enough, it has motivated them so much that both of them are having the best financial year of their lives. So I'm super excited about that. Um, we've got lots of listings that are kind of quiet right now, but I'll tell you what, next February, we're going to make a lot of money because we're doing our photos now for the listings that are going to be coming after Christmas so that we can have photos that are green in a market that's brown. <laughs> right. Um, and so we're lining people up for success well in advance right now. So that's business. Um, my daughter is upstairs. She with me and she's helping to unwrap all the furnishings upstairs. And then we're going to build the beds for my clients who are, I'm helping them do this design. Um, as you know, she had cancer and she almost died in February and um, I was working out of the hospital and I recovered from a broken back and even though that was really overwhelming she gave me the clarity of purpose to be able to focus only on what matters and leave the rest and for me my family my business and giving um, are what mattered. So we created um, a charity that we're still waiting on the final approval for the 501c3 status, but the charity is called mycancerregistry.com. And we're creating connections right now that are going to allow every single hospital that does pediatric cancer care in the United States to use our app and our website to be the bridge between what they can provide and the families of pediatric cancer patients and their entire sphere. And so we have a fee system basically where we're going to partner with them and they're going to do the marketing. And then whenever um, someone's diagnosed with pediatric cancer, they can go onto the website, they can register their story, and then they can put in the cancer patient's needs, the family's needs, and then what the cause needs, so the charity needs. And then when someone says, what can I do to help, they send the app to their friends, and the friends will be prompted to get those 25 things for the cancer patient first, and then to help with the co-payment or the gas cards or the groceries for the family. And then the third bucket is supporting the cause. And when they support the cause, they'll be supporting my cancer registry and the local charities. And that's going to allow the local charities to then um, access and give them information about the events and the gatherings and the resources. And everything is put into our website so that parents can go down that rabbit hole 
of doing their research right when they are in that worst period of their lives, but all from one site that has every single pediatric cancer approved site. And then we're going to have a sampling of stories so that they know they're not alone. So it will absolutely um, provide support. And Agent Image is creating that website. I've got a national board of directors and we are going to be putting together ambassador relationships within the Compass community. And our regional um, president here has uh, empowered us to be able to use the Compass um, community to kind of reach out and grow this. And we're gonna be doing um, a starter charity ball that is called the black white ball a la compass and it is tailored to pediatric or and it's going to allow them to um, show up at a party and learn etiquette and do a three course dinner and do mocktails and casino night and compass agents are going to be the blackjack dealers oh, isn't that fun that's so fun and so we're launching that in Dal I'm sorry, in Richmond first, and then we'll go to Dallas, Houston, et cetera, all those places where I have deep connections and we'll have a compass agent kind of spearhead each location. And so basically we're going to, to plant a franchise idea that's easily duplicated. We're building all the back end um, technology and then people can just pick it up and go with it and learn how to do charitable giving as a part of their business. It's going to be pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. I don't know how you do it all. Who not how? I don't do no, it all. I no, know. I know. I understand all that. No, no. I, and I, I get that. Who not how. But just the fact that you have like it all happened so quickly that you were doing all of these different things all at once. And you planned a wedding. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. In the <laughs> middle of all of it. <laughs> easy in, easy out, man. So yeah, in the meantime, my daughter got married to a lovely man from the Dominican Republic and they didn't want to get married in Virginia. So we had to plan to put together a whole wedding in Utah out of state in between my daughter's chemo treatments. And I, that money is sticky, you know, like when you read who, not how you're like, yeah, must be nice. Just pay someone to do all your cooking and cleaning and marketing and assistant. And like, I don't have that kind of money. Right. But I'm just giving it to God and like, look, I'm going to do everything I can do with with all the integrity and optimism and energy and talents I have and God, you are going to grow those. And then you're going to give me the money to make it so I can keep doing it. <laughs> you know, so, right. so far it's working, but this is definitely not what I would call a financial bumper year. It's just kind of a personal um, growth bumper year. So it's like one or the other, you know? Right. Well, but that, I mean, and unfortunately, I think that's how all of us are feeling it right now. Mm -hmm. But yeah. But we have, I don't know about you, but I've got sufficient for my needs. Right. I'm going out to the car because I think my phone might decide to um, give up on me if I don't come out and grab my charger. Oh my gosh. See, we've all got our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. <sighs> yeah. Well, I'm so glad to hear that everything is going so well for you. Thank you. Do you want to see the house I'm designing? Sure. Okay. It has a long way to go, but this is the living room and I'm super happy because it's actually like this 50 foot wide living room, which is massive. And we were able to get this gorgeous, it's not put together. So give me a minute. We have this huge sofa and then these seating areas and bookshelves and a picture and then over here still working on it but i think doing design work keeps me humble because as a realtor we're always telling people oh yeah you can you can close in a month and then we forget that they're packing up a whole house and putting it into a pod and managing their stress and all of their life changes and then they have to make a whole new home in that month right you know so now what exactly is this home for, gonna be used for? 
Um, it is a mission house um, for an executive couple who are responsible for a whole bunch of little, you know, we are Mormon. And so those cute little Mormon missionaries who run around with their name tags Okay. all report back to a mission president who's right. asked to come for three years at a time and live in a home they've never seen before. And so the people who are going to move in have no idea what I'm doing here. They're, they're just going to show up at the end of the month and this is where they're going to live for three years. Got it. Got it. So, yep. And I just do these every now and then. Um, cause I love it. <laughs> no. No, I mean, that's great that you that you have that um, design. So does does all that furniture get um, donated? No, or? Well, I purchased everything. They only buy these houses every 20 years or so. Oh, okay. Um, so I just I have a design business that I use prior to becoming a realtor. Uh -huh. And hold on just a second. I'm like going to sit in the corner because that's how we roll. But now <laughs> I'm plugged in. Um, I have a design business that I was good at and I did as my side job when I was a teacher. But when I became a realtor, I, um, I pretty much stopped doing that for income. And I just put it into the service of my clients. And so it allows me to better line up and negotiate with contractors and to help them do the staging. I call it the stuff and fluff. And then um, I let them know where the best deals are. And it's, it's a nice thing to be able to have your unique strengths and to know what they are and then to, to just stay fresh by using them every few years. Of course. We, um, so there's a, a program here and I don't, they, I don't think they have it out by you. It's called Humble Design and we did it as part of Compass Cares. We um, did a design day where they take people coming out of homelessness oh. who get Section 8 housing and we um, did that. Um, we so there's a warehouse where it's all donated furniture oh and they have fun. a designer who come in a designer comes in and works with the family to figure out what they need and they get to go through the space that they've secured and um uh they get furnishings for the entire um house or apartments or whatever it is because someone who's coming out of homelessness it can take up to 18 years to furnish an entire apartment. Wow, that's a really sobering fact. Right. And I don't know how you deal with it there, but when I have clients who are moving, we just had someone move from a very fancy three-story house up to New York City, and they were going to throw a bunch of furniture away. And I just, I love getting my husband and my son and daughters involved. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, kids, get in the car. And we went and stashed all that furniture in our garage. And then when I just closed on a client's investment property that he's going to use as an Airbnb, my thank you gift for working with me, my closing gift was a trailer of furniture. And so <laughs> I yeah. love to kind of just like be a part of that um, repurposing. And my husband's like, honey, how come you're not selling that? I'm like, look, I got paid. I just, you know. So oh, this is why people continue to work with me because they know that when resources come, I'm going to maximize our opportunities and with joy, make sure that everybody's getting what is going to serve them the best, you know? Right. Well, we, I will, if people are looking for places to donate furniture, I will say Humble Design or um, an organization I'm on the board. We have um, two, we have three group homes that are always looking for furniture. Um, so, and we'll come and pick it up or um, they are sometimes looking for um, appliances. So we have used um, stoves and refrigerators that people are looking to repurpose. I think uh, she is rebooting herself. 
she's in a bad spot trying to charge her phone. So, yes. So anyways, um, I don't know if she is going to be able to come back on. So I am going to, um, yeah, Marcy. So there's some great ways to make sure that the furniture, oh, are you? Hello, is she there? Oh, you can hear but not see. All right, well, she is here, but she can't, she can, oh, hold on one second. Um, I can't find you. Catherine, let me see. If not, we will just call it a day. And we'll chat again. I'm not finding you, Catherine. Let's see. Here we go. Let's see if she... I don't know what's going on. All right, I'm trying to accept your request. It's not letting me. All right, well, let's see. Here we go. Let's see if she comes back on. If not, we will just end for the day and pick it up again next time. Are you joining us? Marcy, you want to come say hi? It's not working. Hi, Marcy. <laughs> hey. How are you? <laughs> Good. How are you? Good. I figured good. if I can get Catherine on here, then you two can meet each other. I know. <laughs> Oh, I know because I I read that book recently and I've been thinking the exact same thing. If I want to do it, how would I do it? Hi, All these things. Hi. Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> the coolest thing. I've never done this before. <laughs> I know. Stacy's keeping us all hip and young and humble. I know. <laughs> oh, well, I'll leave it to a teacher. <laughs> so, yes. So, I, so Marcy and I are in this um, marketing group on Fridays. And so, so, and I, we w would uh, do work groups prior to the, the retreat. And she sat down, <laughs> sat down next to me on the bus, like the last day of the retreat. No, the day of um, the speaker. And it was her birthday. And I'm like, Mercy, it was so funny. <laughs> The last, the last day it was the party day no. was my birthday it was the last, last night oh it was that last morning night. yeah but yes it was that morning yeah that's right yeah it was so funny <laughs> and so Catherine and i met the first day of the retreat mm -hmm. so oh, and i was a cool. complete mess and i have learned a few times that <laughs> it's okay to be messy and <laughs> to just be out there like you can't always be like that you need to pull it in and also be professional but it, Stacy was so generous and open and sharing and I think you know when you find someone who is in your tribe they're worth hanging on to you know I agree we we connected right away and then followed up and it's just you know really been sharing and really really nice so and she wants to get me on her little show and <laughs> and now this crazy show. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about it, and then I, before I went on vacation. I know, I know. I mean, it's great. I love this connection, um, this compass connection. It's been really amazing, and um, I really love it. And I'm, I would love to talk to you about what you're doing and how the book was inspiring to you because it's been inspiring to me about taking a leap and is really, you know, taking the leap is, um, you can keep thinking about something forever, but, you know, having somebody's input and, and insight before you do it, I think is really helpful. So. Yeah, so my, my group members have said to me on multiple occasions, I'm just afraid we're gonna lose you and they're gonna make you into a coach. And what that's taught me is that 
the value that they see is that we are able to grow who they are and simultaneously it doesn't take anything away from me it actually helps me to better articulate and practice my own systems and uh, to know what value I have. So I would love to tell you the concrete ways that I set this up so that it's a win for everybody. Um, and basically it's the same thing we do for our clients where we try to make their process smoother and easier through systems that are proven. And so I'm happy to share with you kind of the incremental best steps that I found because I think just having a woman and I do believe in the power of women. <laughs> Having a woman who is willing to kind of go there with you um, a few steps will give you the confidence to just take a leap forward, you know. That'd be amazing. We, we yeah, Stacey, you'll have to send me her contact info. Yeah, we'll, we'll set up a call offline. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah, not right now. <laughs> who Kiana Reeves is. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's not the real Kiana Reeves. That's all I know. I know. That's so funny because somebody, somebody friended me, a Kiana Reeves friended me. I don't know who it is. Whoever it is. Maybe they're watching me. Right. Right. Oh, Caroline's on. Hey, Caroline. So, Caroline and Lisa and um, Anna's my favorite person on here. And then Mark, no offense to anyone. <laughs> no, but this, is, but this is also the, um, the power of doing things like this is Marcy is in, in, uh, Florida and well, right now you are in Pittsburgh and I'm, at, but you're out of Virginia and I'm in Chicago. And so we're all being introduced to each other's, um, you know, networks on Instagram. And so that's the whole point of doing this and the power of this. Well, I believe you, but also anyone who knows me knows that I'm terrible at social media. So thanks for helping me take this scary <laughs> step and be and showing up, you know, even if I'm in the corner. <laughs> that's okay. It's all about showing up. And, and it is, it, trust me, it is very, very nerve wracking and stressful. But it's like doing those reels, Marcy, as you know, right? It's all about just doing things that are out of your comfort zone. And as Sky always says, 1% better every day. So there, you are 1% better today than you were yesterday by doing this. Okay, so I have a question. Is yeah. it process over perfection or progress over perfection? Progress over perfection. Okay. <laughs> See? <laughs> I just always get that saying confused. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So there we go. See, <laughs> we get yeah. hung up if we want to be perfectionists. Yeah. That's, it's, it's just, that's, that's why I, again, the leap is, you know, it's, yeah. it's always like, Oh, I want to do that. Perfect. And it's, it's a, it's a stumbling block. It can be. So. I give my clients a bit of a, a time capsule warning when we start working together um, instead of saying my value to you is everything is going to be easy and smooth from start to finish, which some people say, and that's ridiculous. I let them know this is a very important process and transaction and I'm a professional and I'm going to be here to guide you when we have those uh, transaction bombs because they always come in. And I promise you that when something happens, I'm going to lean in and work on it and we are going to resolve it together. And um, it makes it so that each transaction, there's this sense of we as a team are facing this together instead of them feeling like they're on their own when things go hard and I've somehow dropped the ball. Yeah, and I, you know, I was thinking back one of my clients just had their one year anniversary and I was writing them a handwritten note. And I remember specifically them starting to panic because they had to make the decision whether or not to sign the lease renewal because time was running out. And I said, don't, I know we'll find the right house for you. 
and they were getting very apprehensive, but they did trust me and they leaned into the process. And even though we had lost out on one or two, we did find them the right house. And it wasn't the perfect house, it was the right house. And they had to do a little bit of work to it. Um, but the process was, we hit a few bombs, but it worked and that we got in there in time. And so they trusted me and what, and we did it as smoothly as possible. See, but if you were a perfectionist, then you would have channeled their, you know, remaining hopes and wishes as some sort of sense of failure that like, oh, we didn't do it perfectly or whatever. And so you were living and working in that space of progress over perfection. Right. That's like my favorite thing about the ninja book that I've carried with me, another 6 a.m. or boon, is the idea that 85% is as good as we can get to. And I tell people all the time, I'm like, oh my gosh, because I've had people say, I know you're not supposed to buy a house unless it's 100% perfect. And I just get to say, no, no, no. Whoever told you that was not human. <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, we're gonna reset that, yeah. figure out what 100% is. And then as soon as you find 85%, move forward fast. Right, because even if you design a house, right from scratch as soon as you move in you're gonna wish you would have changed certain things yep so nothing is 100 percent perfect and that's what i tell people mm -hmm. so yes i'm i'm all about the 85 percent since i read that <laughs> it's very helpful I'll follow, especially in today's market mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep i mean if we can just find a house we're already at 80. <laughs> Well, as long as it's structurally sound, right? And I'm like, right. If, right? If it's structurally sound and the mechanicals and the windows <laughs> and the roof are like have been redone, I'm like, okay, you're at seventy five percent. Right. The rest is icing on the cake. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. Right. I'm like, I love I new construction. <laughs> Whenever I can have an opportunity to do new construction, it's really? like so nice. Just oh because my gosh, our new it's, it's already starting at 85. Right. You're starting at 85 already. No, it depends on where, and it depends yeah. on who the builder is. <laughs> well, there's some truth yeah. to that. Yeah. <laughs> I love spec homes where it's already done, but if you're starting from a lot and building, and it could be four months or it could be a year, I had to threaten a lawsuit on my last one to get the builder to finish building the last five things after closing. So, wow. yeah, I, I don't know. I just feel like our value is in showing up over and over and over again with creativity and energy and the awareness that we can and will apply the best resource to solve the specific problems that come up. And, you know, there are a lot of people who want to be the expert in all things. And I've been remodeling and buying and selling and fixing up and investing in houses since 1999, but I'm not the expert in all things, right? you know? And as soon as I act like I am, then the universe is going to come and like hit me upside the head. <laughs> right. But I think that's the other key is knowing what you know and knowing what you don't know. Yeah. And what you don't know know you can find someone who does know that's right i'm the expert in finding the right person <laughs> right but i think that's key yep so and and that's what we do is we're a resource for our clients if we don't know the answer we know someone who does or we'll find someone who does stacy are you doing client like how do you connect with your clients um in person i, I know that you're very good at social media and at writing um, notes. Are you also going out to lunches and following up with them? Like, I mean, I've tried, I've tried doing that. Like I'll reach out to them and say, let's grab a coffee, let's grab, you know, yeah. lunch, whatever. You know, I'd love to stop by and see what you've done with your house. But you know, some of them have young kids, some of them have just had babies, some, you know, so it's been hard. I've done client events. I did a movie, I did, um, bowling event. So I've done things and I've done pop buys, but 
like the face to face has been really hard just based on like my clients themselves. Yeah. I have club tickets, so I invite some of them to Cubs games this summer. So cool. Um, like, you know, next week the Pirates are going to be in town. So you know, one of my- well, I may have to do that. I may need to get some sports season tickets and just as an investment, instead of paying for someone to, you know, help me with one of these things that I'm not really using, I could just get a subscription or a ticket somewhere like you're doing. And it would require that I, if, if I get four tickets, then every time there's a sports game, it'll be me plus three other people. And it'll make me use that face to face in a way that's really enjoyable. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay. And I've even just given away the two tickets to clients as opposed oh, to that's me. Oh, that's a idea. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's even better. <laughs> right. No, I mean, because, because sometimes it's just, it's just because I can't use them or whatnot. Um, but like, so one of my clients is from Pittsburgh. So I'm like, I, which game do you want to go to? I have yeah. two of the games. And so, yeah because I can't go to all of them. I ha actually haven't been to a Cub game yet this year. So next week is my first one. Good for you. But yeah, so I do that. But it, it's just been super hard. I mean, my uncle's been sick, so the last four months have not been the best for me to do a lot. But thank you. So, I mean, but I do as much as I can, but I do stay in touch. Um, it's, and my clients are so spread out too. Hmm. That's what I'm dealing with. I mean, this last week was an outlier, but I did drive three and a half hours for a walk through. <laughs> Holy and moly. That, that was on the Eastern shore. It was the investment property I helped my client with um, through my network. But because I'm also an equestrian, I ride horses. Yeah. And so like, I just took one of my listings that's coming up in February is this beautiful equestrian estate. And I will drive anywhere within, you know, probably four hours to help a client if they're serious about an equestrian estate. So, yeah. Wow. That's crazy. But yeah. So, I mean, I've like thought about doing like ice cream at some places and doing that for this, you know, the summer. Um, you know, like on a, from four to six or three to five. I know that's right before dinner, so that's not really the best time. <laughs> but, you know, like with my lender or um, real estate attorney doing things like that. So, you know, that attorney. reminds me, what's your, if you were to have um, your modal client age, what's the most common client age that you work with? Mine is probably 65. Oh, mine, mine is younger. I mean, most of my clients this year, in the last year, are first-time home buyers. So um, some that are having that are, are having kids, or um, you know. So I would say uh, thirty to forty-five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you, Marcy? Um. Gosh. Let's see. I've had this. Um, this year, let's just say, um, yeah, let's see, I had 20s, um, first time home buyer, then I had someone who, um, I don't know how old she is, maybe 40, and then a couple first time home buyers, but a friend of mine, we're closing, and she's first home, she's 55. It's her first home. Yeah, I think she's my, ever my buyers trend younger and my sellers trend older. And, um, yeah, so I've had this year um, um, more first-time home buyers. Um, just, just closed on one. She's relocating. I've had several relocations. Ooh. So several relocations and compass referrals. Oh, good for I've you. Oh, wow. Several compass referrals this well, year. Well, I'll be awesome. a compass referral in Richmond. I wish more people were moving here, <laughs> but. <laughs> yeah, I've only had like one or two. Yeah, well, well I've, yeah. I've been going out and trying to meet compass people, you know, in Miami and just, you know, workplace. My name's come up and. 
you know, then I've had people personally contact me. So I've had a few compass referrals that I've closed, um, which has been really nice because last year I didn't have any, it was my first year with compass. I, I didn't have wow. anything, you know, I didn't even know how to go about all that, but I'm my year in anniversary that. is in three weeks with yeah. compass. I've been here only over a year with compass. So kind of getting in the flow of things and, um, you know, so, uh, so yeah. So between, mm, you know, I've had a few compass referrals this year. It's been really nice that I've actually closed. So I'm just trying to in touch with people too. Yeah, it's about making these personal connections. Yeah. You know, being able to say, I'm not just, here's a name, but I know this person. Right, right. And yeah. I would trust them. People have seen my name come up and they're like, oh my gosh, I saw your name. Like if I'll call them, if they come up on my workplace, I'll call them. Well, yeah, I've seen your name come up, you know, and, um, you know, so then I, I'll, you know, call them and we'll chat. Some people don't respond at all. Like the one, Stacy, you can, I, you, that guy didn't call me at all or anything. And I said, <laughs> I sent a text. I said, <laughs> that happens a lot. Yeah. No. People will, you know, for the ones in Chicago, because there's so many agents get, that get referred, but I'm, it happens. No, I mean, I know just, it just happens. So the ones I have, I've just kind of connected and we've had conversations and I send out a note, mm -hmm. I send out a personal note and, um, you know, be, you know, thank you. Or, you know, can't wait to connect with your person, whenever that's going to be or whatever it is. And so it's been good. And then I want to come to Chicago, Stacey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Come to Chicago. We'll go to a I'll go the East Coast <laughs> experience next on Monday um, in Jupiter. Okay. Uh, I'm going to meet a bunch of uh, new agents there. Cool. Uh, so I just kind of want to just keep meeting new Compass agents and connecting with people and learning more about their area because I was down in Boca and someone showed me their, their area in Boca. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have, you know, I'll see who, how, how, what it's like over there in Jupiter. And they have a brand new office. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's just, it's so hard when there's so many agents in certain areas. I mean, you're in Virginia and Richmond, it's not, there's not as many compass agents. No, no, we opened last year and um, there's really only a few, if you count individual teams, there's only a few of us. I think I was like the 50th or 60th, I think I was realtor, like, but 40 of them were on one team. Yeah. And then, you know, eight of them were on a second team. And so there are some bigger teams. My sweet spot, I think, is going to be um, right now I've got myself and then two uh, agents who work with me. I think there's probably room for another full time agent and then an admin. And then I think for me, that will be where I want to stay. So, um, and it's nice to be able to have it small enough that we can really guarantee that energy excellence. And that is something that we have is like, and we joke around when we talk with each other that we don't sell houses, we sell confidence. And especially in scary market conditions, um, the reason we can sell confidence is because we're close enough to our clients and transaction um, that we're never the deer in the headlights we can keep up with each other and support each other. And so our clients are never left high and dry. That's important. I would never want to be, have a big team or be part of a big team. So I think it is important to uh, be collaborative and, you know, going, and I don't want to keep anyone too long. We've been chatting for a really long time. So um, we can, we'll wrap this up uh, right after these few comments. One of the things that um, in one of the coaching calls I was on or, um, was just the different type of teams, you know, team lead, like, you know, you have the rainmaker and you have the more of the coaching, which is, that's what I'm sure that's exactly what you're like, Catherine, right? And that's the kind of, co the kind of team lead I would be like. 
yeah. you know, the mentor, the coach, um, someone. And I don't feel as confident in my own skills. Um, is Well, if I had the chance to be on a team with all three of you, I would just say, check yes. And <laughs> um, Musa Limpa, who is yeah. so out there, um, and connecting and amazing. She referred me to two books, uh, Coactive Coaching and Energy Leadership. And if I could recommend to each of you energy, energy Leadership or the Seven Levels of Energy Leadership, it's one of those, that book helped me to see and understand how and why I can be a transformational leader. Um, and I think it will help based on, you know, Marcy, I just met you. Um, but what I'm hearing from you and Stacy is you guys actually do have these amazing talents, but you're not confident in how to articulate their value. And I think that the energy leadership is kind of right up your alley. So coming from Musa, who we all trust through me to you ladies, you should check that book out. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, um, Lizette, is this just for compass agents? what what exactly are you asking about oh, oh yeah ask a question yeah. Lizette. hello <laughs> we're so oh, yeah ask any questions you would like we're just um you know we're just coming to happy agents from all over the country <laughs> chatting so if you have a question go ahead we collaborate with everybody man <laughs> we are like... <laughs> my coffee. oh yeah no 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 the live is for anyone yeah, yeah. So feel free to join in if you have a question yeah. or just a comment. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So, I mean, I just, I, I just love it. I love that we get to be collaborators like this. Um, so Lizette, one of the compass principles is collaborate without ego. And I've only been with compass for a year, but the most immediate difference that I saw beyond the technology and the fancy design, was that everybody who I saw was willing to share their best practices with an open heart and they actually wanted me to be successful. And there's not a sense of competition. There's just a sense of what can I do to um, join forces with the people around me. It's and cool. it's not just in your market, it's throughout the country. Mm -hmm. That's what I love. I know. Oh. <laughs> we're like a little infomercial <laughs> NCT, NCTs. what does this mean try to qualify can you clarify your question mm. and what market are you in Lizette mm -hmm. So while she's typing, I will say um, the Richmond market here is like, you know, around 400 and something thousand for an average transaction price. There are very rarely houses that go over a million. And um, so when I, I look at my history for the past few years and my sales volume, and I look at, you know, I've got my average price is 550. Um, and I'm very happy with that. And it could go up. Oh, I see that's what her question, how to increase the average sales. For me, one of the things I say is, you know, we don't sell houses, we sell confidence. But another one is um, every listing is a luxury listing. Every client is a luxury client. And we absolutely provide top shelf photography for every single one of our listings. And we pay and do, just the really simple um, AI enhanced Google ads, the Facebook ads, we let them know that we are going to be with them every step of the way. We use the upgraded black post signs instead of just the metal um, panels. And really, once you start articulating your value to your clients, something opens up in your behavior that actually ends up attracting higher price um, transactions because each one of my buyers I, it's interesting they almost called me like without fail three, three years later 
and have me sell, <laughs> you know? And so that scooches up my sales price too. Right. And I think sometimes it's, it's not necessarily the price point, but it's who they know, mm -hmm. right. And who they can refer you to. So for example, my client, you know, they were buy they were selling their $200,000 condo and buying something for $400,000, but it's also who they're referring me to their friends. And so, and they speak, you know, they'll mention my name on Facebook if other people are looking. And so it's, sometimes it's, you, you can do the one, one million dollar sale, or you can do five, two hundred thousand dollar sales for the same price point because your name is getting out there. So, so it's, how do you want, do you want more transactions where your name is getting out there? Or do you want the one luxury sale? I will say I personally don't have any, um, I don't have any negative energy towards any of my price points. Like every, I don't person. either. And I, I don't either. That's but... a huge thing for our clients, you know, to everybody gets that dignity and respect. And this is going to be their biggest investment you know 95 percent of the time at any price point correct you know correct and i have worked very hard for the million dollar price point as well as the two i mean we talked about my one client who had to go 10 and 15 percent over on a two hundred thousand dollar house i'm working very hard for her sending out letters you know doing all of this work but I know it's going to come back to me tenfold. Yeah, yeah that's right. And I just so had sometimes... a client reach out to me who bought something for um, three three hundred, which is not you know that expensive. But we had a great time together, and she trusts me, and now she wants me to help her buy her eight hundred and fifty thousand dollar home. So once you become a you know a realtor for life, like you are, Stacy, and I'm sure Marcy, you are then as our clients grow so does our business you know right right and i'm doing rentals again too oh and my those gosh rentals will turn into buyers i just today signed a lease agreement for someone and the renters like oh my gosh you're so nice why are you helping me so much i said well we are going to work together starting now all year long and then you're going to buy a house with me next year and she said okay <laughs> exactly right yep I, so once you meet me it's it you, you know it's just you really do when you have the rentals too you really have to keep in touch with them too because you just have to it's um but it's hard or it's i found it a little harder to keep in touch with renters i have some one renter who who she her her friend found them a place for this year but she has sent me for other people oh, <laughs> for renters for renter uh, that's right. her boyfriend her boyfriend's friend another friend like so i mean and these are like thirty five hundred dollar renters so <laughs> i'm curious um in your market like in our market we get 10 percent. it's nothing Half it's like a month's rent minus a hundred dollars a hundred dollars half a month rent don't get any anything for rentals we because in our market it's a hundred bucks we get like 200 bucks yeah i get I, half a month i don't care rent. i help them you, you get half a month's rent well that's a lot more yeah. than what I, i'm getting literally 10 percent it's like 300 dollars or 200 dollars and then split it and i'm i've already spent like last sunday i spent a couple of few hours with someone well it was multiple you know, yeah, so anyway, it's not On a lot. On the listing side, though, the way that I like to see it paid is like if you're listing a place, then you say, all right, um, I'm going to get 1% of the list, right? And so if I'm listing a place for 20, $2,750 for 12 months, and that equals $33,000, then I would be paid $3,300 to get it rented. And then you only give a couple hundred dollars to the buy side. Yeah. I mean, also, Zillow, as much as agents hate Zillow, the Zillow rental manager is worth its weight in gold. It's free and it gives us the opportunity to 
have, if you post it on Zillow, then your renters are actually coming straight to you without an agent because the agents aren't getting paid anyway. And they can just click the button and it does their full background, credit score, income verification, W-2, all of their information. And all you have to do is click send application. And it's so simple and it keeps you in contact with them in a way that is, is just completely intuitive. I love it. Oh, so See, in our market, we can put it on the MLS. Yeah, I yeah I on the MLS, but the MLS doesn't have the background tool for me to give the. We we have um, we use listing to lease uh, listing to lease, oh. and the and the app and the person applying for the the the. And you can apartment. put that on the MLS. Yeah, it's <laughs> a link. Got something too call rent free or something it's like that and it Man, costs like 39 dollars i just need to learn about it <laughs> yeah added to our yeah so it's yeah sue compass that's cool yeah all right well we've been chatting an hour so which is much longer than i had wanted to keep you but i'm so glad we did thank you, was, thank you. So, and Marcy, thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, ladies. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa, yes. and all of our friends on here. Um, yeah. I really actually am just like completely grateful and excited. And I feel like I've just become savvy on Instagram for a hot five minutes. So thank you. <laughs> well, have a great afternoon, ladies. And you'll have to send pictures up on stories. Oh yeah. Put I the final to... once what? the house is all done, do before and after pictures on stories. Okay, that that's like a really obvious thing to say that I would have never thought of. <laughs> so thank yeah. you. All right. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. And bye. Bye. You send me her info and then we'll get in touch. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Sounds great. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. bye.